Hello biology class. Welcome back to another lesson. This is number three as you can see. Uh, bacterial versus viral infections. These are the two uh, types of infections that can occur. Uh, so we're going to compare them a little bit and then I believe in the next lesson uh, or a little bit later we will compare uh, their treatments. So key point one is bacteria types. Uh, key point three is virus types, and then we'll get into what gram positive and negative bacteria means in the middle. So, uh, bacterial infection. Uh, a key point here is that a bacterial infection is proliferation of a harmful strain of bacteria on or inside the body. Uh, this bacteria uh, can uh, proliferate on its own. If it needs to, it can proliferate in a puddle. Um, you know, on a piece of metal, uh, it doesn't need to only prolifer proliferate inside of um, a human. Uh, the bacteria can infect any part of the body. You can get a toenail infection with the same bacteria uh, that you do a fingernail infection or a cut or a sore. Uh, the same bacteria can infect any area of the body. Uh, some different bacterial infections, like the bacterial infections can cause pneumonia, they can cause meningitis, which is uh, an infection of the spinal cord and brain. Uh, bacterial infections can cause food poisoning. Uh, just a few illnesses here that might be caused by harmful bacteria. Uh, it's key that bacteria are alive and they are considered unicellular organisms. So there you are, you are multicellular. Bacteria are one cell, uh, but they are considered to be alive. Uh, bacteria come in three basic shapes, and here are some pictures of some real bacteria. There are the rod-shaped, which are over here, rod-shaped bacilli. There are spherical bacteria down here, uh, cocci. And then there are helical over here, which is spirilla. So you can sometimes know what type of, what shape of bacteria it is based on uh, the name. So sometimes a bacteria will have a name and then it will be cause, uh, called spirilla. So that means that it is that type in a helical form or something something cocci uh, that is uh, in a, a spherical form. So there are different shapes here uh, and they are kind of in the name, staphylococci. That one just came to my head, staphylococci. Uh, that is a common infection uh, that can happen just under your skin and essentially just causes kind of like a boil. It's kind of painful. Uh, it can be cut and then the pus can be drained. That is a circular uh, bacteria that is causing that one, a staph infection. Uh, gram, positive and negative, or negative and positive. So that's key point two here. Gra uh, bacteria can be broadly classified as gram-positive or gram-negative. Uh, gram-positive bacteria have cell walls that are tough and thick, uh, and that means that they can be more difficult to treat because they can be tougher to break up or tougher for macrophages to engulf. Uh, and what this does is when you test, it creates a purple color in the gram test. Uh, gram-negative bacteria have cell walls that are much thinner. Uh, but the reason uh, that they are much thinner is because they produce way more toxins at the site of infection and can be kind of more dangerous in small amounts. So gram-positive are kind of tougher and harder to kill but less dangerous, while gram-negative are easier to kill but are very dangerous and produce lots of toxins. They create a pink color in the gram test, very similar. Viral infections. Uh, a viral infection is a proliferation of a harmful virus inside your body. Uh, the key difference between bacteria and viruses is that viruses cannot reproduce without the assistance of a host. So bacteria can reproduce anywhere, while viruses can only reproduce if they are inside a host, whether that be a human or an animal. Uh, they need to hijack the uh, DNA uh, of their host to actually reproduce. So viruses infect a host by introducing their genetic material into the cells and hijacking the cell's internal machinery to make more virus particles. So your own cells have DNA in them and they are have all the information that is required to make proteins, which 
uh, do a whole bunch of jobs within your body. You can imagine a virus getting into your cell and hijacking all that machinery that is used to make those proteins and instead making more virus particles. So it has no way of making more virus without you. It hijacks uh, your body to make more of itself. Viruses are generally not considered to be alive as they need a living host to reproduce. Um, they are not unicellular. They are different. They are just packages of DNA or RNA, we call them, uh, that do a specific job. Produce more of itself. That is its job. So there's different types of viruses. Uh, rhinoviruses are the type of virus that most often cause a common cold, but there are like 200 different rhinoviruses that can cause colds. So it's very difficult to get a vaccine against them. And there's no really reason to because they're so, you know, harmless. A cold barely harms anybody at all. Uh, rotaviruses are the most common virus that causes diarrhea disease among infants and young children. Uh, nearly every child in the world is infected with a rotavirus at least once by the age of five. So these things are extremely common. Uh, we have coronaviruses. Uh, coronaviruses are a group of uh, related RNA, RNA viruses that cause diseases in mammals. They mostly cause respiratory tract infections that can range from mild to lethal. So that's what we're dealing with right now. Again, there are lots of different coronaviruses. The difference with this one is that it's completely new. Therefore, we do not have any immunity third line of defense built up against it. Uh, there are many different versions of each type of virus, and they may all, all cause similar symptoms, uh, like all types. So um, rhinovirus is the common cold, runny nose, stuffy uh, head, um, kind of just feeling unwell overall. Rotaviruses cause diarrhea. Coronaviruses cause respiratory tract infections. Even though they're all similar, they all do the same thing. Many viral infections resolve on their own without any treatment at all. So your body can essentially activate its second and third line of defense to fight it off. Give it a couple of days, you're no worse for wear. Some viral infections do require symptom relief. Uh, symptom relief would be like, man, I have this really bad headache, stuffy nose, I need to get rid of it, or I have this cough, I'm going to take cough syrup. So Tylenol and Advil for a headache and stuffy nose are an example of symptom relief. Uh, the thing is, these do absolutely nothing to address the virus. You may feel better, but it does not help anything with regard to the virus at all. Uh, it is still proliferating inside of you, but your symptoms have resolved. Uh, there are some antiviral medications that can attempt to disrupt how the virus moves and most, are most effective if taken early on, but there's not a lot of specific treatments for virus. Uh, it is often... Uh, supportive therapy and lots of hydration, lots of fluids, lots of um, salts like um, sodium and potassium, making sure everything is balanced, uh, making sure that oxygen levels are doing well. Uh, that is essentially the treatment for a viral infection. There's nothing you can send in to attack it. So comparing bacteria and viruses, bacteria are much larger than viruses and they can reproduce on their own, while viruses can only replicate while in a host. This is because uh, bacteria have their own DNA and machinery, while viruses use the host DNA to replicate itself. Uh, the symptoms can be very similar, but the treatment for each is extremely different. Um, bacterial infections are spread by direct contact or ingestion of that particular bacteria. It must enter your body. It must be through food, through your mouth, or through your eyes, through your nose or mouth, through a cut. Often a cut can get infected with a bacteria if that bacteria comes into contact with it. Uh, but it must be through pretty much direct contact with the bacteria. Viral infections, however, can be spread from person to person or animal to person in many different ways. It is usually some form of bod bodily fluid, whether that be respiratory droplets, um, or diarrhea, or uh, it could be sexually transmitted diseases that um, are transmitted through um, sexual fluids. Uh, so they usually need person-to-person -person contact, but can be transmitted in a few ways that way. 
Um, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do a little bit of research on meningitis. Um, it can actually be caused by bacteria and viruses because meningitis is just a word for infection of the spinal cord and brain or the nervous system. So do a little bit of research and answer the questions about that. And again, if you have any questions at all, please, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it, and I will see you soon.